this Prezi is going to go through ideas of active reading strategies. So I know you've all taken English composition, so freshman composition and GL 110, but I want to go over again how it's slightly different when we're dealing specifically with business documents or technical documents or any more professional document related to a kind of organization. So active reading, as most of you should know, is in, requires interaction with the text. So you're not just reading it and you know just consuming it. What you're really doing is asking yourself questions about the text as you read it. What is it that you already know about these readings and what are you taking notes on? What should you be taking notes on and why? How can your successful reading process shift to accommodate screen reading? So most of the readings for these courses are going to be loaded online. How do you read PDFs? How do you interact with PDFs? How do you take notes in relation to PDFs? If you have a physical textbook, how do you use the textbook in conjunction with the online work that you're actually doing? And most of you have been doing this for a year or more. Um, what you want to do is consider the differences between reading on a page and reading on a screen, how you take notes, what your note-taking strategies are for that, and how you read to interact with and understand and retain information from text. Um, and just keep in mind, screen reading will be much more common in a professional setting depending on the kind of organization that you might join post-graduation because digital technology, especially digital technology to secure documents, has become a huge thing in the business world. So screen reading has become very prevalent. So build strategies now so you can use them later. So active reading for professional and technical workplaces, you obviously need to determine the purpose of the communication. Why is the communication being sent in that format? So if it's being sent in a PDF, if it's being sent in a draft document that's attached, if it's being sent in some sort of a document design system, if it's being uploaded through um, any of the electronic systems that you can upload through, so Google Docs or something like that, or if it's being sent via email, how do each of those influence how you're supposed to understand the purpose, and then what is the actual purpose of the content message? Um, determine the expected response. What are you supposed to do with this information besides understand it? Are you supposed to respond? Are you supposed to do something? Is this affecting your job? Is this affecting your schoolwork? Figure out what's the expected response, and then determine the best way to remember or internalize the information communicated. So if it's information for how to do your job, how are you going to remember that? If it's information on a new deadline, how are you going to remember that? If it's information on how to understand an assignment for class, and it was communicated via email, how are you going to remember that? And this includes the future use of the information. So if it includes an acronym that's now going to be used, how are you going to use that? So for this class, I will say a lot, tweet at me. Um, so how do you understand that in the context of this particular course, and what are you going to do with that information? Okay, so we're going to go through an example just to give you an idea because I'm going to try to keep this video really short. So I have here an example letter where a company informed a person who had purchased a product that the product was not going to be replaced because they misused the product. So we're trying to figure out why it was all communicated in this particular way. So the first thing we want to acknowledge with this beginning part, and we can see this through purpose, is that we're validating the customer. So part of the purpose of a business communication in this particular piece in this particular situation is the validation that we understand where the consumer is coming from. We can identify with their particular situation. So we specifically say, we've received your letter. Okay, so now we can continue on and now we're starting to get to the nitty gritty of the actual business communication or technical communication depending on you know just the naming of that particular office. So you stated in your letter that you use the player in an uncovered patio. We then go through, this can seriously damage the model. Then specific information is pointed out to the user about, yes, we understand that you're requesting us to honor the contract. However, you violated the contract, therefore we cannot replace it. So finally, we say, we hope that we can help you in the future. In each of these cases, the communication and the format of that communication is very, very specific to attempt to resolve the customer's issue at this particular moment. So we wrote, or this person, Susan Siegel, wrote in a very specific way to acknowledge the customer, to acknowledge that they receive the information, that they understand this particular instance. They provided details specific to Mr. Sweski's instance, but then also pointed out based on the model, based on the information provided, why the contract could not be upheld. So in this case, I want you guys to really consider the ways that this letter could have been sent to this particular customer and what ways make a difference to the purpose. So we've pointed out a few different 
moves, a few different sentence structures, a few different approaches to communicating information that indicated types of purposes. So now what else needs to happen? Should this be on letterhead? Should this be communicated by email? Should this be communicated on letterhead in the mail? All of these have very different ways of furthering the purpose of this particular correspondence. So what are those? And then us as active readers, how do we read those in addition to the message? And then once you graduate, how do you understand how to use that understanding in the job, in your job application materials so that you can get the promotions and the dream job that you want? How does active reading strategies now influence all of those benefits later? So if you have any questions about active reading, please email me or tweet at me. The goal here really is for you to understand your own active reading process so that you can turn that into a strength for your writing process that you can then you know, use to advertise yourself to potential employers later after graduation to say, here's why you should hire me. I can write and I can think and here's the proof. So again, if you have any questions, send me an email. Otherwise, I will see you guys online.